Hello everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back to another design team project for Not Too Shabby Shop. Today I'm making another card with the Gerda Steiner Designs Chicken Scratch stamp set. So the first card that I did with this stamp set was a very clean and simple card. This is still a clean and simple card, but I wanted to use all the little critters. So here they are. I've laid them out on a piece of extra cardstock here. I find this is helpful when I'm going to be doing some stamping and masking to figure out which of the images I want to stamp first. So I'm going to be stamping this with my Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink because I will be Copic coloring these images today. So these are the little critters that I want to have in the forefront, so I'm going to stamp them first. I did stamp them twice just because, I don't know, it's habit. I like a nice black line. So while I'm doing the stamping, each time I add another layer, I'm going to be bringing back the little post, fence post here that they are going to stand on just to make sure that their feet are all on that and I don't miss stamp. So you can see here, I'm just about to stamp and realize I need to add my masks and you'll notice that these masks are not bright white and that's because I've already done this card once and I made a couple mistakes and I didn't want to re-stamp out these stamps onto the masking paper so I just went ahead and used the ones I already had done. I will show you the mistakes that I made. If you're new to stamping and masking, don't get discouraged. Just keep practicing and it gets easier as you go. But you can see I still constantly have to remind myself to get these masks down before I go ahead and stamp the next set of images. So I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to bring that little fence post back again to make sure that our little pig here is going to be where it needs to be. I did misstamp that the first time, so I learned my lesson by bringing this little fence post back each and every time. So I'm just going to stamp this little chick that is going to be on the pig's head. Once I get that down, I'll add the mask for the little chick, and then I'll go ahead and stamp our pig, who will be in the center of our little scene card here with all of the chickens and roosters on either side of him and on his head. So I'm going to line up the pig again on this little post. I love how it's drooping from all the weight of our little critters. I'm going to stamp him a couple times as well. I find once you have masks down, you do need to stamp at least twice, just because that masking paper will get in the way a little bit of stamping your images. So the final image to stamp out is the fence post itself. So we're going to do that here quickly. And then we can move on to creating the scene, or not the scene, the background, which I've chosen to do a very simple background with Distress Oxides. So stamp this up one more time, and then I'm going to need to add the mask for the fence post as well. And I'm using Simon Says Stamp masking paper. All the products to, um, all the links to the products that I use will be in the description box below. So here's the first one on the right. You can see I misstamped the chicken. I put him behind that big rooster's tail, which would have been fine because then it would look like his fluffy tail got in front of him and he was displeased about that. But then I noticed that I had stamped the pig off of the fence post, so I knew I had to redo this. So I just brought in some Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide here. I'm using my makeup brush. These are from Amazon and they allow for a really soft background and they're so easy to clean. You can just use a microfiber cloth and it comes right off and you can go on to your next color. I'm just going to pull up the masks. I love once you see the little scene you've created. And really this card is all about the coloring, so it is a lengthier video today and that's because there is so much coloring for this card, which is why I decided to uh, leave the background pretty simple. So here you can see where I made the mistakes on the right and where I fixed them on the left, which is the one that I'm coloring now. 
So I decided to start with our little pig here for the coloring. So I'm using R22, R30, R00, and then at the end I'm going to bring in the E00. I'm just laying down my R22 under where the darkest shadows would be. I wanted to give him a little, or her, a little bit of extra shading. Typically when I used to do three color blending, I would just do the R30, but I really thought the R22 just gave a bit of extra of dimension. I am going to do the snout and the paws or claws or whatever a pig's foot is called in that darker color. So for the snout and feet, I'm just going to use the R22 and the R30. And then I'll use the rest of the colors on the body. I am doing a bit of tip to tip technique here where I'm just touching the R30 to the R20 to blend that out a little bit more. This just helps when you have two colors that are a little bit far apart. It helps along with the blending. So I am going to do that for all of the areas for which I put down the darkest marker. And then I'm going to go ahead and just use the R30 and pull out that color even more. Once I get the R30 done, I'm going to bring in the R00 and really going to blend that out. I like my smallest areas to be left for the highlight color, which in this case is the E00. But you're going to see that I'm going to bring that E00 over the entire body of the pig to give him or her that little almost, I don't know, I feel like the E00 really makes it a pig color. Gives it a touch of brown, but very light. So for this little chicken on the farthest right, I'm going to color him with some C color markers. So I want him to have a dark gray or black undertone, but then you're going to see I'm going to add some color to him. So I started out with the C5 to map my shadows, and now I came in with the darkest marker, the C9. Then I'm going to bring in the C7, which I'm using here now, I believe. And then I'll bring, or that was the C5, the C5 to blend that out. So I wanted to give him a almost like a greeny color, but I thought the best color choice would be my blue greens. So I'm using the BG18, the BG13, and the G02. And you can see here at first it looks quite blue, but once I bring in that G02, it will give it that green tone that I'm really looking for. And I think this is just a fun color color combination for our little chicken here. I'm not sure if he'd be considered a chicken or a rooster. And then I'm going to bring back in my C5 and my C3, I believe. Maybe my C5. And I'm going to go over that a bit more with uh, the cool grays just to give it some more shadowing. For his head, I wanted to do it in some yellowy orange tones. I'm just bringing in the C3 marker here down at the bottom to kind of help transition that a little bit more. And then I'll come in with the Y38, which is the darkest marker that I'm going to be using. And you can see how that C3 marker really helped blend in between those two colors. My darkest midtone is the Y17, and then my lightest midtone is the Y15. And then I'll go ahead and blend all that out with the Y13. Now I am going to be doing a bunch of gel pen detailing at the end. So you'll see how these really start coming alive once I add some detailing to them. Once I get our little guy here done to the right, I'm going to work on this little rooster and I'm going to color him black. So I'm just taking my C1 marker and I'm going to go around and figure out where I want my darkest shadows to be. And then I'm color coming in with my C9. Now I'm using a very light hand here so that there's not too much ink uh, coming off of the marker. And you may have noticed that underneath his little wings there or arms, I did leave a little bit of space between the drawn lines. And I'm going to do that until I come in with my C5 marker just so you can see the definition between the two. So once I had my C9 down, I came in with the C7 to pull that out a little bit more. And then the C5 is what I'm using now. 
Once I get my C5 down and figure out how much of that I want, I'm going to come in with the C3. I'm going to leave only the smallest portions for the C1. Now I didn't quite like the blending and color that I got the first time around, so you'll see with this little rooster I do go back and do a second coat, but that's really one of the benefits of Copic markers is they are translucent, transparent, one of those two words, so you can add color on top and it works perfectly. I just wanted to bring out some more of the darker shades so that he looked more black than he did gray. And I'm pretty happy with how the second coat turned out. And again, I will be adding quite a bit of gel detailing to um, this little guy as well. And it really brings him to life. So I'm just going to use my C1 marker now and I'm going to go th through and outline all of their eyes. Then I'm just going to blend that out with my colorless marker gives them a little bit of shadowing instead of leaving them stark white. So for this little guy, I'm going to color him white just as I did in my first video using this stamp set. Again, just outlined him with the C1 marker and then coming in with the C5 in the darkest areas. I really didn't use a lot of C5. I used mostly the C3 and then the C1 and then blended both of those out with the C00 marker. I think after I turned off the camera as well, I did go back and outline him again with the C1 and then use the colorless blender. So for our little hen here on the left, I'm going to use some brown colors. So my darkest marker is the E57, and then my darkest midtone is the E35. My lightest midtone is the E34, and then I'm going to use the E31 as my lightest. Again, once I get this first coat down, I am going to go over it a second time. I felt like I lost a lot of my dark uh, shading, so I'm just going to bring some of that back here and then not blend it out as much as I did the first time. The hen really won't have that much shading on it because there's only the small part where it's behind that other little rooster and then it would be darkest by her neck as well where her body would cast the shadow. And you can see at this point they aren't really, I don't know, they aren't alive I don't think until, well they're not going to ever be alive, but they don't come alive until I add the red uh, for all of the little detailing on them. But while I had my brown markers out, I decided to do the little fence post. So I didn't want to bring out any new markers, but instead of using the E57, my darkest is going to be the E35, and then my midtone the E34, and my lightest the E31. So I'm only using a three color blend for this. I really want this to kind of almost fade into the background and have the chickens and the roosters and our little pig be the center of attention. So it really doesn't matter uh, that I don't have much detailing in the fence post. Finally, I'm gonna color up the little chick who I love the little facial expression. Just looks so cute on top of that pig. And I'm gonna do a three color blend for this as well. So I'm doing Y15, Y13, and Y11. I wanted him to be, or her, to me a lot lighter than the head of the rooster on the right hand side. So here's where I'm going to do the red and I feel like as soon as this is all done it really brings them to life. I'm only doing a two color blend because these areas are so tiny. So I'm using R29 and R24 and that pop of red throughout just finishes it off so nicely. For their beaks, I'm going to use a YR24, which is like a golden color, and I'm going to blend that out with the Y35. And then for their legs, I'm going to keep this pretty simple. I started out with the E53, but then I wanted them to have a little bit more of a flesh or a pinky tone, so I brought in my R00. And then I'm just going to add a little B00 to their eyes. They're all going to have blue eyes, just for the sake of simplicity. So now that we have the coloring done, I'm going to go ahead and work on the sentiment. So the sentiment that I'm using is, hey, 
let's get together soon. I am going to curl up the let's get together soon a little bit so that it matches the same kind of roundness as the fence post. I feel like that just makes it look more cohesive. So for this, I'm going to use my VersaFine Claire ink and I'm going to stamp this one time. That's all you need with this ink, which I absolutely love not having to multiple to do multiple stamps for the sentiments. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and add this to my card base. Now, I've been using the Art Glitter Glue for a few weeks now. I love it, but the little red knob on the top of my metal uh, my metal adapter, whatever you want to call that, came off. So I've had to put some washi tape. Well, I use purple tape actually for now. I need to put some more I need to put some washi tape on it. But I wasn't really happy about that. But anyways, if that's happened to you, let me know. I'm thinking of writing them. I mean, because I've literally only been using it for a couple weeks. But I love the glue, so I, uh, I will keep using it. Anyhow, back to our card here. So here's where I'm bringing in the white gel pen for detailing. And I just, there's just something about the white gel pen. I absolutely love it. So you saw there I gave the little black rooster some flick lines to look like he had longer feathers. For a little greeny black and yellow guy, I just added some polka dots and then added some highlights onto the other characters. Now I'm bringing in the black glaze pen and I'm going to do all of their eyes and then I'm adding some black flick lines as well to the black rooster and a few on our other little chicken or rooster to the right. And of course, just going to mark the X spot a little bit more with my gel pen. I only have a few more added touches to finish off this card. I'm using the doodle bug. Um, these are the shape sprinkles, the hearts, and I'm going to add three of those along the card. I had a little bit of trouble here positioning this pink one and then wasn't really sure I loved it there but I ended up putting it back there. I'm going to use a yellow one down by the sentiment let's get together soon. And then I'm going to add a green one to bring in the green from our chicken up to the top of the card near um, the pink one that I had put down. And to finish that off, I'm going to use some Nouveau Mountain Dew Drops. These dry clear just on their beaks and then I'm going to do the peak the pig's feet as well. And that will finish up the card today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this card. I know you seem to really enjoy the first one. Don't forget to use coupon code GEN10 to save 10% off your order. And there is a link below to the Not Too Shabby Shop. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you really soon in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye.